In the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 10, I'm looking at it here. In verse number 2, Jeremiah spoke, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. And throughout the centuries, people have been trying to merge religions all together and trying to find the overlap and the common ground that we have. And if we can find some common ground, maybe we can work together and accomplish something for the greater good. But true Bible Christianity has always been the exception to that. True Bible Christianity says there is no overlap in your religion and my religion. The Bible is right and everything else is wrong. Christianity has always believed that we have the right scriptures and nobody else has the right scriptures, that we have the right Savior and every, all these other saviors, the Buddha, the, uh, the Muhammad, all the other ones are not really saviors. And then also we have the only salvation that there is, the only scriptures, the only Savior, and the only salvation. We believe that. John 14, Jesus spoke and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And he's saying to the world that there's one way to heaven. And truth is about salvation and eternity. There are, there are literally millions of roads to hell, but there's only one road to heaven. And you can only get there if you take that one road. That one road is Jesus. Many people don't know this about early Christian history, but in the Roman culture, they had something called the Pantheon. And, and the Pantheon was a big building, and they would put uh, all the Roman gods up inside of these pantheons, these pagan temples. And uh, later on, that merged with another false religion and ended up becoming something called Roman Catholicism, which is not Bible Christianity. And uh, the early Christians actually had a lot of trouble with the Roman pantheons because the people who ran those pantheons wanted to add Jesus to the lineup of gods that were represented and honored in those pantheons. And the early Roman, the early Christians at Rome always stood against that and said, no, no, we will not allow you to do that because Jesus Christ is not another God amongst a litany of gods. Jesus Christ is God. He is the way, the truth, the life. Everything else is wrong. Jesus is right. And we won't allow you to do that. They had a lot of trouble with early Roman culture because of that. And um, I want you to say that even the very nature of the word holy, the word holy in of itself means it's set apart. For example, if I were to take a loaf of bread and I were to cut a piece of that loaf off, I were to set it apart for a sandwich on my plate. What I have done is I have made that separated unto a certain purpose. And God's people are supposed to be separated. We are supposed to not be in the loaf of everything else, of all the other religions. We're supposed to be a separated group. And, and even uh, God in the Old Testament even says, I am, I am the Lord. I am holy. And that's the chief attribute of God. He is holy. He's set apart. He's not like the other gods. He is above and greater, and He is the only true God. And all the other gods in the world are false. Matter of fact, if you go down through Jeremiah chapter number 10 and verse number 10, it says, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting King. And so you find there that God is saying that I'm it. I'm the right one, and nobody else is right. And so the thing is about Christianity, true Bible Christianity, is that if you mix it with untruth, if you mix it with heathenism, if you take Bible Christianity, which is its own holy thing, it's separated from all the other religions of the world, if you take that and you mix it with something, then you do not have Bible Christianity anymore. You don't. You have ruined it. For example, if I were to take a bowl of vanilla ice cream and set it right here and uh, get ready to eat it, and then all of a sudden somebody came and poured what looked like chocolate syrup on top of that that bowl of ice cream and poured it on that and then said I hope you enjoy your motor oil on top of that ice cream I would be shocked and I would say oh my goodness I thought that was chocolate syrup but truth is it was motor oil all of a sudden you took that bowl of ice cream by pouring motor oil in it and mixing it with something that was not ice cream you took that beautiful bowl of ice cream hallelujah I love ice cream it's good you took that beautiful bowl of ice cream and you, by putting motor oil on top of it, you turned it into garbage. I'm not going to eat that. I'm going to throw it in the trash. And so should you. I highly recommend that. Trust me. And so in today's age, we have people that are trying to learn the way of the heathen. 
And by learning the way of the heathen, they're trying to take the, the ways of the heathen and try to mix them with the ways of the Lord. And just like pouring motor oil that looks like chocolate syrup on top of an on top of ice cream, you are actually destroying the bowl of ice cream. You're destroying it. And the only thing you can do is throw it away. Start over. And Ever since I did my third Adam video, I've been trying to explain to people the mixture, the merging of all these religions together. And it looks the same, and it all kind of acts the same, but truth is there's only one truth. There's only one true church. There's only one true religion. There's only one Savior. There's only one scriptures. There's only one way of salvation. And you need to know that. And so the list of people trying to merge secular with sacred goes very long. And by the way, when a man tries to merge secular with the sacred, he proves that really nothing is sacred to him because the very nature of the word sacred means that it's not some common thing that you just throw in the trunk of your car and let it roll around. It's a sacred thing. And so the, the list is endless, but our friend David Kilborn sent this to us. We're going to do a video about it today, but... There's a new heresy on the rise called Splankna. Splankna. And I want to show you this, and it's training and certification in biblically based mind body protocol for emotional healing. Basically, what this is, is merging Eastern religions of chi and body energies and Hinduism and acupuncture, merging all of those things together and calling it Christian. And this is off Splankna.com. This is out of California. A bunch of weird stuff's always coming out of California. And on the Frequently Asked Questions page, it explains that uh, this is a training institute for Christian counselors, lay counselors, and believers who are passionate about healing. It offers biblically-based protocol for holistic psychology. Plank Splankna is a New Testament term for bowels in the first century poet and literature. And the term was used the way we use the word subconscious today, like a gut sense or deep awareness. The treatment protocol taps in the subconscious root of the system. This is right off their website. It says, we all know what it's like to feel stuck, so our willpower is insufficient. And um, <laughs> Splankin has a way to get straight to the root cause of these emotional patterns and unlock them all at unlock them at the frequency level. Do you see that? Unlock them at the frequency level. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on my third Adam video, if you notice on the very top of it, um, there was a there was a a little symbol up there, a little purple symbol. That's called in Hindu, that's called the Om. Have you ever seen those Hindu priests and all those people who practice all that stuff, how uh, they, they, they moan and they go, oh, and they, they make that long, almost monotone sound. And a lot of them will have these big brass bowls and they'll take they'll take like a, a stick or something. They'll rub it around the ring of that so it kind of makes a noise. And it's, uh, it's, just a, it's just a frequency is what it is. And they believe that God operates at a certain frequency. And so if you want to communicate with the higher power, the Shiva or whatever, uh, then you have to do the Om. And that Om will bring healing. It'll bring the blessings. It will bring communication. It will open up the channel of your energy, of your body, so that you can communicate. And actually, what they'll do is they'll, they'll do the Om. And a lot of people have astral projections where their body will go up into the universe. And that way they can communicate and do spiritual things. They believe that this, that the frequency of the Om is the key to all that, unlocking all that. That's, that's Eastern religion. And so these people that are practicing this stuff, saying that Splankna is a way to get straight to the root cause of these emotional problems and lock them at the frequency level, they may as well be wearing uh, turbans on their head at this point with a red dot in their forehead because that's, that's exactly what they're saying, that we believe and practice this. Now, here's a uh, website, Shalema.com. And by the way, if, if they're using these, these weird words, you need to run from this stuff. Um, it says right here, what is Splankna? A Splankna therapy is a holistic therapy put together by Sarah Thiessen. It's a combination of several protocols including EFT, TFT, NET, and M EMDR. First therapy protocol to use energy psychology. That's a buzzword right there. Energy psychology. That is not good. 
You run from that from a Christian's perspective, which brings up another question. What is energy psychology? Energy psychology operates using the same meridian lines that chiropractic and acupuncture use. The idea is that energy flows through our bodies among these meridian lines, and, uh, and when there is a disruption in the flow of energy, uh, we experience symptoms mentally, emotionally, physically, Energy psychology uses knowledge of these meridian lines to help restore the flow of energy to alleviate mental and emotional symptoms. That is crazy talk. That's new age talk is what that is. That is new age terminology, the meridian lines and all that type of stuff. Now, that's exactly what that is. Energy psychology. I mean, I, you, I may as well be sitting in a David Icke seminar right now talking about the reptilians uh, taking over the earth with the meridian lines when going through London. I mean, I, 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 we may as well be talking about that right now because that's basically the same thing that they're saying here. Now... I'm not against holistic stuff. Uh, I, I actually I go to a chiropractor because my back hurts sometimes, and, and it actually helps me. But this is goofy stuff. Now I want to show you some. Uh, this is one of the guys who helped create it, uh, apparently, and he uh, he's actually a practitioner of this. And listen to what he says about Jesus and about the idea of using the uh, unlocking the subconscious and unlocking troubles in the subconscious. Just watch this for just a moment. Um, activated. They're deep within our subconscious. Most of the, the deep emotional events in our life occur and are stored not just within our conscious brain, but our subconscious. And our conscious, subconscious brain was created to protect us. And so there's this filing system that when we find ourselves in an emotional or stressful situation, um, our conscious brain gets hijacked by our amygdala, which is that gate in the brain that goes to fight or flight. And we react rather than cognitively respond. To change those buttons or deactivate them, um, and change those triggers, we got to work on a subconscious level, not on a conscious level. And what about a spiritual level? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, I'm not, I'm not against seeing a therapist, and I'm not against going to talking to somebody, having a counselor. I'm not against all that. But what about the spirituality behind this? What about spirit, soul, body? What, are, where's all that talk happening? It, this is all, this is all psychobabble, new age terminology being disguised as Christianity and acting like everything is fine. That's not what this is. This is bad stuff. Listen to what he says. So the, this protocol that, of healing that reworks those triggers is called Splunkna. Now Splunkna is a Greek term meaning gut or the center of our, our lives and our being, the, the very place of our heart and our soul and our body, really that we would call our hearts. It really is about um, centered in compassion. One of the things that we saw when Jesus... Let me just throw something in there. Okay, if you want to work on the heart, that's fine. But going practicing Eastern mysticism with an unsaved modernistic Christian who doesn't believe the Bible's the word of God and doesn't believe uh, that Jesus is the Son of God and deity, and you believe that Jesus was some Eastern mystic going around with acupuncture needles and al alcohol swabs, putting needles in people's faces, uh, that's, that's not the same stuff. You're nuts, man. You're crazy. That's not who Jesus was. And if you want to keep your heart, the best way to do that is to read your Bible and to stay in the local church and have an accountability group around you, which is the local church, the local assembly, uh, the local group of believers that you can work with and be encouraged by, and you can encourage them and pray for them and serve the Lord through all that. That's what you need. And like I said, I'm not against counselors. I'm not against going talking to somebody. If you need help with something, you're dealing with something really harsh and hard. Hey Amen. Go do all that. Let somebody help you. But this is this is not this is nonsense. This is apostasy. This is modernism. This is this is evil. And you need to stay away. Jesus walked on the earth in the newer testaments where it talks about how he looked upon people and he looked upon the crowds and he saw them with these hurts and hangups and habits in their lives that, that were hindering their joy and their ability to live from hearts fully alive. It says that deep within his gut, within his heart, he convulsed with compassion to see these people released from those emotional hangups and hurts. That's a lie. That's a lie. That is a lie straight out of hell, what that man just said. Jesus didn't weep over them because they had these emotional hangups and they, they could be released and have joy from these emotional hangups. Jesus wept over these people because they were going to hell. This, this, what this man just said is in a complete assault on the gospel. This man, that, that's evil what he just said. That is a, that is a evil thing to say. And, uh, I, I, I mean, Every minute I watch this stuff, it just blows me away. But listen to these testimonials of Splankna, 
uh, participants. And listen to what they say about what happens whenever they I go through this. I first was introduced to Splunk about four years ago and got the training. And at first I was skeptical. But as I begin to use it, I found that it, it's really an amazing tool that not only helps you diagnose and assess, but helps treat. The amazing thing is, is that God's power shows up through this tool in amazing ways. And I Okay, that's, that's, that's a manifestation. She's saying God's power shows up through this tool. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't believe that for a second. God does show up, and, and I believe that the Holy Spirit does work and, and show himself, and I believe in all that. Some people say that I don't, uh, but I, I do believe that. But I don't think God uses Eastern mysticism to show up. I don't think so. Not No, no ma'am. I'm sorry. I just can't find that in the Bible. I believe that the reason that that happens is because it so lines up with Scripture. It allows a person to, like an x-ray, the tools just sort of point where the problem is, and then the person is able to confess and renounce and release and repent of very specific things that allow God to come in and heal the person in very um, specific places. That Okay, so listen to what she says. She said, this, this tool allows God to come in and heal you. Okay, that that is straight out of the occult. What she just said that that we open up gateways and we open up these energies in our body and we release these certain points that were hung up and we release those and God comes in and heals. That's 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 a, that's Satanism talk right there. That's that is wickedly deceptive. What this woman's into. I pray for her. I wish she'd get out of that stuff. And get saved. But listen to this testimony as well. I and to see how that's changing her. Yeah, it has been an honor to witness. One of my um, greatest experiences as a practitioner was um, when a client had called me um, just so overjoyed and thrilled with the work uh, that the Lord had done for her. She had been uh, experiencing severe depression for uh, a very long time and um, and she had called to report that um, it was just a, a, a very drastic transformation that she had experienced and that uh, didn't go away right away, that it was long lasting for her and that she was so filled with uh, God's peace and love and joy and happiness and laughter that all those around her um, wondered what happened. Okay, so she's saying I had this woman that was depressed, and then you know all of a sudden she practiced splankna, which was putting you know needles and acupuncture and activating certain energy points in your body, uh, and now all of a sudden you have peace. That, that's a kundalini awakening. That that is that's the, there's no difference between what that woman just said and the Eastern mystic kundalini uh, yoga practices being done. I mean. The, you know, I, I believe Christians can have depression. I, I believe they can. I, I know some good Christian men who are uh, former military have PTSD and all that stuff. Okay, but th this is not it. Th this is not the answer to that. This is a deception. And if you're looking for peace and joy, you better not. If you, you're not going to find an Eastern mysticism, that's for sure. I had been in chronic pain um, with fibromyalgia and uh, migraines for five years. Um, the migraines had lasted a lot longer than that, but the the uh, muscle pain and not being able to move, not being able to dress myself had been going on for five years. And um, I had gone to seek healing, um, been prayed over several times, and finally had come to a place where I knew God could heal me, but if he did not have healing for me, I knew he was going to take care of me and get me through the pain. We started working together. And um, three sessions later, she reported no fibro pain. Okay, so, you know, this woman's saying that, you know, this splankna cured my fibromyalgia. And, and I, my heart goes out to people with fibromyalgia. I really do pray for you. I'm so sorry. That is, that is not a good thing. Uh, but, folks, this is not Christianity. This is not Christianity. Now, let me show you this. There's a website that I go to every now and then. It's gotquestions.org. And I think it's a it's actually an okay website. Uh, very few times have I found something on there that I disagreed with. So I, I think it's okay. Um, what is Splankna therapy and is it biblical? It's a great article here. Uh, Splankna is Christian energy healing. Pro proponents of Splankna call it the first per Christian protocol of energy psychology. Splankna attempts to approach the energy psychology. Healing modulates from the Christian angle, focusing on th uh, field therapy, eye movements, decent 
desensitization, reprocessing, and neuroemotional technique. Those are those uh, acronyms we heard earlier. And uh, a healing moduality is defined as a therapeutic med- method or agent surgery, chemotherapy, chiropractic med- manipulation, acupuncture, etc. And it goes on and explains all this stuff here. So it talks about the word splankta, meaning bowels and all that type of stuff. Um, here, and I, this, I say amen to this right here. The basic problem of splankta is to take the methods and doctrines of Eastern mysticism and tries to Christianize them. Splankna is wholly based on New Age spirituality and the Spankla ther- Splankna Therapy Institute admits as much on their website. This is what they say, okay? Uh, the only developers of these tools have come from the New Age perspective. And uh, discerning Christians know that it is impossible to put a Christian face on paganism. Amen. I wish I could get this across to people. You can't mix the two. You can't. It's not how this works. Uh, Philosophies based in New Age teaching have no place in the thinking of believers. The Holy Spirit is not an impersonal force that travels in theoretical theoretical psychic pathways. Eastern pantheism does not become simply biblical because we use a Christian label is applied. Splankna is a pseudoscience and a part of religion, part philosophy, and holy to be avoided. And then 2 Corinthians 6 uh, verse 14 there. So, uh, wonderful article. I agree with that 100%. I'm telling you, my channel is not about music. My channel is about the purity of Bible doctrine and and staying right, keeping keeping the doctrines pure, keeping the doctrines correct, and don't let it be tainted with bad religion or mysticism or the world. The Bible says in the book of James, chapter number uh, chapter number one, and it speaks about in verse number twenty seven. It says, "Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to." to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That's Christianity. Pure religion, undefiled. Visiting the fathers and the widows in their affliction, fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That's Christianity. You can't mix it with anything else. And if you do, it's like pouring motor oil on a bowl of ice cream. You just can't eat it. It's trash now. So trash it. Start over. Get you something good. And I think some of you may need to start over as well. I, I put out this offer. If you need to help find a church, a good church that doesn't teach this kind of stuff, let me know. I, I As best I can, I'm going to try to help you. But folks, stop trying to merge paganism with Christianity and act like it's okay. Stop, stop doing it with these holistic medicine, trying to merge Eastern mysticism with it. Uh, stop trying to merge the music of sin, the music of rock and roll and rap. Stop trying to merge all that with Christian Christian words. Please stop. Please stop. And then stop trying to incorporate pagan practices into your Christian life. Please stop. Just stop. But if you want to do that, that's fine. But you've poured more motor oil on the ice cream. And I see people eating that stuff. You want to eat it? God bless you, but not me, baby. I want the real thing. I want that real stuff. The pure religion. So subscribe to our channel, folks. We're going to do many more videos just like this. Looking forward to talking to you again. And we love you guys.